Like I said, it would be really good. I am. Well, we're just about to get into the game, so cool. And I'm fi I'm finally going to be commentating over one of Keen's matches because he uh, he was commentating over my top top yeah my final match in 2015 in the Vocom Regional, so I actually finally get to return the favor. Oh, I get to see a Tapu Fini for the first time. Is this really the first time we're seeing Tapu Fini on the stream? Yes, that's impressive. I think we. I think there might have been a Feeny at one point, but. Well, uh, if, if, if there's a lack of Feeny, then Paris was indeed the call. But instead, we're going to be seeing Arcmine, Tapu Koko, Garchomp, Kartana, Tapu Feeny, and Mandibuzz from Luke's End. And we're going to see Tapu Koko, Alodum Raichu, Garchomp, Arcanine, Araquanid, and Murkrow on Jamie King's End. So, very interesting team on, Ke on King's side. We see a lot of good stuff from Luke, but tried and true stuff. We're going to see an EVO like Pokemon as well on Jamie King's side, so. Obviously, definitely, like, def <laughs> def 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 I, I definitely approve showing he's part of Team Jamie with that EVO like Pokemon, so. Oh, yeah, okay, you changed it. Huh. I know, I'm a professional, right? I got everything. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, so Keen's decided what he's going to go with. It's, it's going to be interesting to see because Amanda Buzz will be able to take one of the electric moves from either of, even though he is Jamie, he, I, I can't call him Jamie. That doesn't. That's not how this works. Yeah. So, there's too many Jamies yeah. to do uh, that. I, I, I will be referring to Jamie as Keen. Unless we have like a real Jamie. Match. Am I not a real Jamie? <laughs> okay. Fine. <laughs> of course. So. It's gonna be interesting to see if we see that man of us to try and get the speed control, or if we're going to see. Um, no, we are going to see the right tap go close. So. Both of those uh, fault switches not doing uh, enough to. Take that, it out. That, that Volt Switch pretty much does confirm the item on the Raichu because that did a lot of damage to a plus Yeah, it did a lot more than Coco to so, as well. Yeah, so we're going to see the Coco come straight back in and reset the electric terrain. So double Volt Switch. Yeah, it makes things a lot more dangerous for uh, for Loop right now. Definitely. And oh, a Muddy Water Void on the tap of Coco. So that's going to be very big. The uh, d double Speed plus Tailwind, fastest thing ever. Muddy Water. A decent amount of both. It, it, it does hit the Murkrow, yeah. so it's hits the Murkrow, gets it out, and uh, chips the Raichu a bit for uh, about a third of its health. Yeah, but now now the Raichu is in. It didn't get an accuracy drop, so it is threatening a lot of damage now that the Tailwinds are being matched. So it is back to being the fastest Pokemon. I'm gonna see Tapu Koko again, and mm. yeah, that's it's basically the only because uh, then once that happens, then feed it, uh, then. Um, Keen has free reign to just take out the Feeny at his leisure. Well, we still got the Tapu Koko in the back as well. Exactly. It's a full HP as well, so if the Garchomp goes down, then Keen is very, looking very strong with his Tapu Koko against the Tapu Feeny, so... He I think we, 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 yeah, we're basically hitting a, uh, a checkmate position, but we see a Protect from the Feeny instead this time. I, th I um, think he's trying to um, go for a big read, because looking at it, his only way out would have been to get double and triple text with his Garchomp, but I think he was trying to read a, a fancy switch into the Coco as the Garchomp protected, but yeah. that's not going to work out since the HP Ice is just going to one-shot the Garchomp with the uh, extreme speeds, just um, uh, ensuring that the KO happens in, in case it was maybe the Yachi Berry or Assault Vest on the Garchomp. So very nice covering that. The Feeny Protect doesn't really help Luke here. And now Keen is in a very strong position because he can just withdraw his Raichu as he's doing into the Tapu Koko, reset the electric terrain, and then the Koko yeah. and the Raichu do threaten the one-shots onto the Tapu Fini. The Arcanine doesn't really matter here because yeah. Keen does still have two electric types facing down on Tapu Fini. Yeah, and it's basically checkmate now. So, yeah, extreme speed, not much damage, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Muddy Water's going to, I don't know, do, do enough to probably not take out either. I uh, might do, yeah, not, not take out either of these Pokemon. Um, we do get an accuracy drop, so that could potentially be a way back in for Luke if he forever misses his um, uh, thun uh, Keen m misses Thunderbolts onto the uh, Tapu Fini, but the Raichu doesn't have an accuracy drop. If Keen just lets one of his Pokemon go down here, then the Raichu will be able to clean up. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if I saw if we saw a Thunderbolt into the Arcanine so that Keen could get a free switch into that Raichu to ensure the win, because we don't, he shouldn't want to mess around with the accuracy drops, which is what happens, so... The Arcanine yeah, is, is going to be avoided. Arcanine again. just avoids the So we're not going to see a, a, anyway. a free switch into the Raichu this turn. Because the Muddy Water shouldn't knock out the Coco. Are we going to see another Axe Drop? We don't, but it doesn't really matter. Luke is going to forfeit the match, though. He can see that there isn't really a way back in with the Raichu in the back. He would have had to catch the Raichu on a potential switch, which would have been the only way back in. But there was no way that Keen would have switched in a Raichu into potential Muddy Waters to get accuracy drops because he had a 100% win condition if he left the right in the back. So, very nice to play from King, and he is going to end up taking game one. So, 
It's going to be interesting to see how Luke adjusts here, because he did lead two electric weed Pokemon into a Coco Raichu. I wouldn't expect the same lead, but looking at his options, I would I would expect a Garchomp lead, but now we've seen the HP Ice from the Raichu, that's not a safe lead either. So it's gonna mm. be, like it's gonna be interesting to see how Luke, Luke adjusts to this Raichu Coco lead. Yeah, Luke doesn't look, looks like he has a very. He does, doesn't look like he has a good matchup against what Keen's got. No, it, it's, it looks a lot in in Keen's favor because his his two answers to to the Raichu Coco is getting up the Tailwind with the Mandibuzz, but then that's leading into two Electric types and the Garchomp, which is now threatened as we've seen with the one shot from the HP Ice. I mean, so. maybe the Cartana can have some something to to uh, to pull this back, but true. But um, we did see that Keen bought his Arcanite. So. Yeah. That would, that would stop the um, KOs from the Kartana with... Leaf Blade would normally be a KO on some Raichu, but if he just intimidates it, then Raichu will be able to survive. So. Yeah, I think the Kartana is his best hope at this point, I think, to, to, to take down those two, because those two have been... Those two dominated him the first match. So... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm struggling to see what Luke... Um, he needs to get the Raichu to lock itself into a move that's not HP Ice and then use his Garchomp. I think that's what his game plan should be. But it's going to be a very... He have, would have to sacrifice a lot to get into that position. And then the right you can just switch out and then lock into HPS when it comes back in. So it's going to be very awkward for Luke here. Yeah, he's thinking really hard about that. Hasn't locked in yet. Oh, he should definitely take all the time he can because it's is a very awkward matchup for, for Luke here. Especially if he has worked out what the item on that right you is. Because the, given the damage, it is almost certainly choice specs. Anyone speak extremely Sheffield regionals? I have no idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm unsure about the Sheffield one. I don't. I don't think that Matt's going to the Sheffield one, so potentially no stream there, unfortunately. Hmm. But we do have a stream here, and we're going to get into the Maybe second game. Maybe should talk to someone, four. see if I can get something up. That would be good. It would be nice to have a stream there as well. So we are going to see the Garth on me. Okay, so King can threaten that with the HP Ice, but he needs the right shoot to lock itself into something that isn't HP Ice, else he won't be able to get Earthquakes off. Did we see if the Garchomp was uh, scarfed at all? That won't help against the turf, the Raichu in this um, the terrain. Yeah. What I would have probably like to see here is a Finny Garchomp lead because if that's if the Garchomp is scarfed. Because if it was scarfed, then the Misty terrain would have activated, not the Electric terrain. Mm -hmm. Raichu would have undersped the Garchomp. So interesting to see what's going to happen here because it should be a HP as long as the Garchomp. But then it's going to be it's going to be awkward to see how Luke punches that. So he is scouting for the HPI. Yeah, set. and we see that it's definitely not choice scarf now. So yes, but um, we do see the Volt Switch. So that that's kind of what what Luke needed. He needed to play for for King to lock in, into another move. It is Volt Switch, so we'll be able to switch out and lock into something else in the future. But. I think he needed to capitalize here with the um, possibility of not going for the HP Ice and go for the Earthquake. But even if he did go for the Earthquake, the Murkrow could very easily come in and, and then just resist that. And we, um, we don't know the... Do we know the item on um, Keen's Cap Tap Coco at the moment? Um, I think it's Focus Sash, okay. from what I've seen before. So, well, yeah, it would have been able to take a, an Earthquake then. So if that, isn't, if that is Focus Sash, then it is now broken, and the Garchomp can threaten the Earthquake KO onto the Tap Coco now. But... What we're going to see, and we're going to see Arcanine. Okay, now now, now Keen has a guaranteed Tailwind as well. Don't know how necessary it would be, given that he's got Coco and Raichu outspeeding all of Luke's Pokemon anyway. He could just get away with um, Citric Washes or just foul plays onto the Garchomp now. But we are going to see Dazzling Gleam. Okay, we did see that um, Keen's Coco undersped, or at least went second um, compared to Luke's uh, Tap Coco. So we don't know if that's a speed tie or whether Keen's running a modest Coco and Luke's running a, a timid one. So it's, it's, it's an interesting position. We don't know if the, the Arcanine is the um, offensive one or the defensive one. If it's the offensive one, it could potentially be in range of a Thunderbolt, but then he would lead him, leave himself open to an Earthquake KO onto his Coco, but then he would end up Earthquaking his own Arcanine. So he'd have to go quite hard on that read so that the Arcanine would be KO'd to the Thunderbolts. They can't really stop what the Murkrow is going to do. It's going to be able to get a foul play onto something. I don't really see the need for Murkrow going for Tailwind here. But he is going to go for Tailwind. Actually, something for, um, to consider for the future, actually, because if the Raichu is Specs, then it is most likely carrying uh, Electric Ball. And with the Tailwind, it would oh, yeah. actually increase the power of that Electric Ball. Yeah. So if he's going to Volt, he shouldn't, probably shouldn't be Volt switching into his Raichu here, because Luke could very easily be Earthquaking his own Arcanine to try and uh, get rid of one of the Electric types. So it is going to be a risky move if he switches into his Raichu here. So I would expect his other Pokemon, which is yeah, going to be the Arcanine. An Arcanine. Gets a bit more intimidate. Well, he intimidates uh, two physical attackers, yeah, which is good news. Even if the Garchomp was going for Earthquake, 
onto his own Arcanine as well, then it will now. Oh, it's going to be Substitute instead. That's a very interesting move on Garchomp. We don't yeah. often I think, see that. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I saw this from Luke earlier in the uh, in the tournament, actually. Yeah, we see a Flare Blitz come out. It's going onto to the Arcanine. Not, yeah. With the Intimidators now switching into a Fire type, that's not going to do much damage at all. But the Substitute actually gives Luke a way back in. So what we were saying, we, we need, he needed to get into a position where the Raichu couldn't HP Ice. Yeah, and, this and now it there. actually has it. Because Arcanine's not going to have much to be able to break that substitute, and it's going to... The Muck Crow yeah. will, though, because yeah, a, foul, a foul play yeah. will be able to break the substitute. So Luke needs to preserve that substitute so he can get into a position where the Garchomp can Earthquake the, the Raichu. So he needs to knock out the Muck Crow this turn. I don't think he can do that if he sacrifices a substitute. He's going to protect, but unless the Arcanine has Wild Charge, I don't think he'll be able to take out the Muck Crow here. He needs, to be able, he needs to have Wild Charge on his Muck Crow, and he needs to knock out the Muck Crow. Yeah, Mokro actually just goes for a foul play on the Arcanine, probably calling the fact that Garchomp is going to want to keep that substitute. Yeah, it's just going to be Flare Bits, so most likely not carrying Wild Charge here. But he does knock out his own Arcanine here, which is actually pretty good, because it gives him a better chance to uh, to take out the Mokro in a, uh, with something else. That's true. I, I wouldn't be surprised here to see Luke go for a second substitute. Because the Murkrow will be able to break it with the foul play, he'll be able to get up another substitute. So he'll be able, he'll be using Keen's Tailwind against him if he goes for a second substitute. Because the foul play will knock out the substitute, he'll get another one, and then the Coco will be able to take out the Murkrow with potentially a Dazzling Gleam. Maybe it's not in range of a Dazzling Gleam, but definitely an electric move. But that would, um, with the Arcanine's well threatening the Cocos, um, that's not so good for a Luke anymore, because he is in range of Flare Blitz, and Keen does have the Tailwind. So he does actually threaten the KO on the Coco without be it being able to take out the Murkrow, and the Murkrow will be able to take out the substitute of the Garchomp, so then it will be able to be HP iced in the future. Yeah, Arcanine just starts starts off the bat with a uh, Flare Blitz, going to hit into that Tapu Coco, and uh, that's going to take it out, so... Yeah, actually, the Tailwind is uh, still working against Luke because he can't even get the uh, Thunderbolt it, it did in. Seem, it, it, initially, it did seem that it was a bit unnecessary considering that all his electric Pokemon outsped, but then he, had, he considered that in the future that the Arcanine would outspeed the Tapu Coco, so very nice Tailwind uh, on King's End. We are going to see the Tectonic Rage, so he's going to be able to take out the Arcanine, but now the Substitute is gone. Yeah, now the Substitute is gone, and he can just get a chance it's to... Uh, it's just in range of HP Ice now, yeah, so... No, yeah. Just gets a chance to bring in the right and go for another HP Ice, which is not what he wants. Does Luke have one more Pokemon? Is he down to his... Is Scar from his last Pokemon? Does he have one more? Because I think, he, I don't know. I think he has one more. We've seen Arcanine and Coco go down. I believe he has one more. Hmm. He's going to be able to take out the Arcanine now, but now he uh, King can just bring in his Raichu, go for HP Ice onto the Garchon, and then there's not much Luke can do. His Pokemon that he, needs, he switches in here has to be able to take out the Raichu. Yeah, Jamie brings in Raichu, and I think we'll be seeing Tapu Fini. Tapu yep. Fini, yeah, that, that does make sense. So now the electric moves will be weakened, but Tapu Fini can't knock out Raichu in one shot, and I believe the Raichu's still at full HP. And if it is, then Luke's yeah. looking in a very bad position, because even if he goes for all the protects with his Garchomp, Raichu will still just be able to HP ice the Garchomp, and with the Tapu Koko in the back, he will just be able to switch that in at any point, reset the electric terrain, and take out the Tapu Fini. So... This is not looking good for Luke, yeah. I don't think. I, th I I think he needs to probably protect his Garchomp and set up all the Calm Minds with his Tapu Fini so he has the potential of tanking the electric moves in the future, but it does need to be a lot of Calm Minds, if he is indeed carrying Calm yeah. Mind. So it's like, not it's not looking good for Luke. Maybe it may be, uh, like, at best, may, uh, could, like, lock the Raichu into a hidden power ice, but he wasn't, wouldn't get a chance to knock out the uh, yeah. Murkrow in time. It, lo it looks like Luke's going for the read of the Volt Switch, and that's what he has to go for, but Keen very smartly just going for HP Ice. It was very safe. Uh, the only way out, if he did go for HP Ice into all the protects of the Garchomp, would have been a lot of Calm Minds on Tapu Fini's end, but... He is smartly just going to HP Ice, and I don't think there's any way back for Luke now, because the Tapu Coco is still in the back, still threatening the one-shots with onto Tapu Fini in the electric terrain. And it looks like Keen has secured his place in the final of this mid-season showdown. Woo. Woo, indeed. It's very <laughs> nice to see at least, it, at least it, one it, member it, of Team it, Jamie doing well. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's as if I was making predictions earlier when I was moving the names around. <laughs> yes, that's, that's certainly true. So going to see Coco switch back in. That makes a lot of sense because he's getting the electric terrain back up for the Raichu, so the Raichu will be able to threaten the one-shot rather than the Coco, because if it is Sash, then it, it could potentially not knock out this Fini in one, and his only way out is Muddy Water Accuracy Drops now, so if we don't see an Accuracy Drop on this turn, then there is really no way back in for Luke, but with the Raichu still in, yeah, there's no way back in for Luke now. It wasn't it really it, it, even with the Raichu in the back, so... He is going to play out, which is, which is good. He, he should try and still secure his place in the final bits. I don't think there's any way. With the quash as well, that's just icing on the cake, really. We're going to be able to see if the 
Sash Coco can knock out the Feeny in one shot, so that'll be interesting to see, but it does survive, so that's that's good information for the future. And that does reveal the, the Super Berry on the, the Tapu Feeny. So, got a, uh, some nice, nice information yeah, going up. forward. It doesn't really matter at this point because Luke is out of the competition, but it looks like he's probably going to take this to a 1 0, which is a lot nicer than a 3 0. So. Oh no, the Merc it's just going to be a 2 0 because the Murkrow is still bulky enough to survive that. So. <laughs> the Raichu is going to come back here and most likely go for an Electric Ball and take out the Finny. Very, yeah, very nicely played for the Fiend. There wasn't really much that Luke can, uh, could do to, uh, against the Raichu Coco. I think it was, it, was, it was well played from both of them, but I think Luke just had the unfortunate thing of, of being in a terrible matchup. Well, he did have the tech the tech to get his way out. Because the Raichu didn't lock itself into HP Ice in the, in the mm. first turn, the substitute would have been it would have given him a way back in if he could have positioned yeah. himself in he, he in, needed to play that substitute better, and he, that's, a, that's a very difficult thing yeah, to... Yeah, he, he needed the Garchomp with the substitute up against the Raichu that couldn't switch, and that would have been a very, very difficult position to get himself in, and he wasn't able to achieve it this time. So, Jamie Keane will advance to the final of this mid-season show. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm torn well. whether I want to buy the Switch, actually. I mean, the thing is, I'll be working with it, so I think as I work with it, I'll, uh, I'll start well, seeing it, what it, I think if, about if, it. If it's necessary for Pokemon games, I will be, but... Yeah. yeah. We, we've got the match starting now, so... We've got Andre with a team of Tapu Lele, Arcanine, Snorlax, Buzzwall, Nihiligo, which is the correct pronunciation, I assume. And Drift Blim with Jamie Keane running Tapu Koko, Alolan Raichu, Garchomp, Arcanine, Arachnid, and Murkrow. So it's going to be interesting to see whether Andre goes with his Tailwind or Trick Room options. I am assuming the Nihiligo is Trick Room. I believe we saw it on stream earlier. So it's going to be interesting to see which option he goes with because he should go with a, a speed control option because he can stop the quash from the Murkrow with his Tapu Lele's terrain. So if he positions himself with the Psychic terrain up instead of the Electric terrain, then Keane's uh, uh, speed control won't be so effective anymore. Does, do, um, does the... Um, actually, no, because uh, I was about to ask, does Psychic Terrain not stop it from going to Tailwind, but it's not contacting the ground, is no, it? No, so it's, it's, it's only uh, only um, priority moves that would affect the opponent. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to be going to be seeing Tapu Koko and Raichu from Keen's end, and we're going to see Lele and Arcanine, so no Drift Blim or Night Illigo to start getting some speed control up on Andre's end. So very interesting. We are going to see the Psychic Terrain go up, but we have seen the Raichu is Choice Specs Raichu. And now the Psychic Terrain is up, he will be able to probably press on a one-shot onto the Arcanine with his Choice Spec Psychic. So, interesting choice going with Arcanine here, because Tapu Koko and Raichu was a fairly obvious lead from uh, Keen. He's been leading it almost all of his games, so leading an Intimidator against the two special attackers maybe not the most optimal, especially because it's potentially going to be in range of a Choice Spec Psychic. Mm. Or Psyshock, I have been seeing that from, uh, from Raichu. That's true as well, the, um, the Psyshock hits the Nightly goes a lot harder. Mm. And see, uh, Keeney is facing an Ihaligo in this match, so it's going to be interesting to see which psychic move he did opt for for Raichu, because he almost certainly has one. So we have seen, th uh, I don't know, have we seen Electro Ball yet? I believe it's Electro Ball. It's definitely Volt Switch. I've seen Ice, Electro Ball so. from, from a Raichu this tournament. Okay. This, this is likely going to be a, a double Volt Switch here, but to reset the Electric Terrain for, for Keen. Because if he targeted into the Arcanine with the Volt Switch, it's unlikely he would be going for a Psychic. Unless he uh, suspects that Arcanine to be particularly specially bulky. His day is just a double yeah, Volt Switch, so, so no no knockout onto the Arcanine. Because with the Choice Specs in the Psychic terrain, I'd have preferred to see a Psychic uh, or Psyshock, depending on which Psychic move Jamie King's carrying, onto the Arcanine. Because now the Arcanine gets to uh, pull off a move. It does reset the Electric Terrain this turn, but the Arcanine does survive and will be able to get a lot of damage onto one of his Pokemon. We're going to be seeing a Psychic, and it's going to be a Psychic into the Raichu slot, so very nicely calling the double Volt Switch, because he yeah. did just Psychic into a Raichu, uh, Raichu yeah, slot, rather Raichu than the slot. Coco. So is it, is it going to be a uh, Flebs into the... It's going to be into the what was the Tapu Coco, so... Yeah, and oh, it even gets, it gets the, burn, the burn, so that's that's quite a turn for Jamie Keen, well, taking quite a bit and, of Andre that. does lose but his Yeah, he does lose his Arcanine. But he did get a lot of damage onto that Mokra and did put it on a timer that's with the burn, so... Mm. I would have probably preferred to see the Psychic move coming out from Keen's end. Maybe he predicted the... Well, he, he couldn't have predicted the Protect because he did double into the Arcanine, so... Yeah, he probably didn't expect that, that Psychic. Yeah. So, yeah, Nihilego comes in right now. Um, he's probably not, not afraid of either of these two. Well, it does have the potential to set up the Trick Room. Because yeah, we, can, we can see from its HP, it's actually quite a bulky Nihilego. <laughs> yeah. So... Because the electric terrain's up though, he needs to switch out his Tapu Lele to stop the Murkrow from being able to push things in the future. If he is indeed going to go for the Trick Room, he may just decide to just attack, because if he lands both attacks with the Lele and the Nihiligo, he will get a double knockout if Keen's not switching. 
He does have the potential to Volk Switch again with his Coco, which is what I would expect. So he is going to go for that. And he's going to be into the Nightly Go. So if it did have a Focus Sash, then it, that is now broken. But I, I, I don't know if I would like to see a Raichu Switch in here, because then he's uh, opening his Raichu up to a lot of damage from in the future. So he's going to bring in a Rapid. So hope maybe predicting the Trick Room from the Night Galigo, because if he does go for Trick Room, that puts uh, Jamie Keenan in a very good position. The Dazzling Gleam is going to knock out the Murkrow, and we didn't see any pranks to move, so most likely going for a foul play here. But are we going to see a Trick Room or a Power Jam? It is going to be a Trick Room, so the switch into the Arachnid was a very nice play indeed. Getting a lot of momentum now for Jamie Keen making Andre's uh, use of Andre's Trick Room against him. Mm. Or just going to see what Keen brings in a second. Well, he's either got his Coco that's on no HP yeah. or Raichu, and both of them yeah, will both. be super fast in Trick Room. So it's going to be the Raichu. Yeah. So if um, uh, Keen has the Z-move, which I do believe he does have on the Arachnid, then that would probably be able to KO the Nihiligo through the text. Although this is probably a bulky Nihiligo, so possibly not. But now he does threaten the Liquidation onto the Nihiligo, and the Tapu Lele won't be able to knock out the Raichu at once. So even though the Raichu will be moving last, it should be able to get a huge amount of damage onto one of the Pokemon, mm -hmm. because he should be liquidating the Night League here, which is what we see happening. Yeah, uh, yeah that's going to be, uh, that's going to be able to take that Did out. That, so. oh, that, 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 that lagged a little bit, it looked like it's side on 7 HP, and I was <laughs> very surprised if that happened, but is this Moonblast enough to knock out the Raichu? Did we see Life Orb on the Tapu Lele? We, most of the, I think yeah. we did, if that was yeah, that's able to knock bit. out the Raichu, yeah, that's so Life Orb. I take everything back. So Life Orb Moonblast was able to one-shot this Raichu, so we do, um, King does go down to his last two Pokemon, so, and yeah, I believe that well. Andre's on his last two as well. So we've got the Buzzwall and the Tapu Lele here. So this is an interesting position because Keen still has the Z-move available on his Araquanid. I don't know if that's enough to knock out a Buzzwall. It will be enough to knock out a Tapu Lele, but the Buzzwall could very easily protect and waste the Z-move. So it's going to be interesting to see if Keen can pull himself out of this position because the Coco is almost certainly going down this turn. He will have to protect out of the Trick Room, but there should be too many turns for him to stall out with the Coco. So I think he's going to have to run his Arachnids to, mm. to pull him through this match. It's going to be interesting to see if the Liquidation knocks out the Buzzwell because Buzzwell does have a lot of defense. Yeah, so. it's, it's going to be... Uh... I think if, if Keen uses his Z-move into a Protect, then I don't think he'll be able to pull this one back. It's going to yeah. be interesting to see. It may, may just be a double protect to allow his own trick room yeah. to try and scout out the, the liquidation, but yeah. Coco is going to protect. So are we going to see the Hydro Vortex onto the Buzzwall? That should probably be the only way back in for the match for the King. Yeah. Is he going to and go yes. for the Hydro Vortex we onto the Lele or the Buzzwall? It's going to be very, very key for deciding this game one. And oh. also, if the Buzzwall can take a, a, a Hydro Vortex, it has the potential to with its massive defense. So it's going to be interesting to see. Is it going to be the Lele? It's going to be the. It's going, it's to, be going the to be the Buzzwall. Buzzwall. So if, it, if this doesn't KO, I don't think King can pull this one back. But if it does, King might actually have this one. But with the oh, huge defense from the Buzzwall, we're going yeah. to see an all-out pummeling come out from oh, the Buzzwall wow. as well. So is this going to be onto the Arachnid? Because it might be. I believe the... we've seen um, Fighting Move and the Poison Jab from the Buzzwall. So it doesn't actually have that much to hit the Arachnid. So a uh, and all that pummeling uh, makes sense uh, using it now because he's down to his last two Pokemon, so he might as well use it now. But is it going to be able to knock out the Arachnid? Oh, it's going to knock out the Coco. Yeah, I was going to say, get it through such the protect. Low but yeah, that, do that does make a lot, of, um, a lot of sense because that will definitely get the KO onto the Coco, even if it protected. So We did see the Protect on the Tabu Lele, though, didn't mm. we? So... So yeah, that's, that's protected itself. It's going to uh, yeah, be boosted. Do we have... I, I think we have two we more have, turns of Trick Room. I was going to say, yeah, how many turns of Trick Room? Because then... Um, cause if Lele can get out, out, out of the Trick Room there, yeah, it's got an easy shot in the uh, Araquanid, and it's... Well, the, the Lele can, even though it's in the Electric Terrain, it can likely knock out this Araquanid with two Moonblasts, because mm. it is the Life Orb Lele, so... If there's two more turns of Trick Room, then Keen has to correctly predict the Buzzwall Protect, because... It can threaten, it could probably two-shot with a Poison Jab, because Araquanid's defense is a lot lower than its special defense, and the Buzzwall did get a Beast Boost from knocking out the Coco, so the Poison Jab should be a two-shot on Araquanid. Both of Andre's Pokémon should be able to two-shot Keen's Pokémon, so we're going to see no Protects, it's going to knock out the Lele, but if the Buzzwall can two-shot this Araquanid, then I think Andre's got this one. Mm. So yeah, we see a Poison Jab from the Buzzwall, is it going to be enough? It does have an Attack Boost from Beast Boost, Oh, so. that's, that's easily enough. Yeah. Because now... I believe yeah. there's one more turn of Trick Room, but all the Buzzwell has to do is protect it. Yeah, it protects it itself well. out of the Trick Room yeah. and then... Because um, if Keen did still have access to his Hydro Vortex, yeah, he, he wouldn't, wouldn't be able, able to get it out there. To win but... the match that way, but he has used it already. So 
if he did end up liquidating, uh, liquidationing, which way around you say that? Liquidating, liquidating or liquidation? I don't know. Yeah, Liqu liquidating. Li liquidationing. If he liquid liquidationed initially and then went for the Hydro Vortex, he could have potentially pulled that back. But even that way around, I don't think that would have done enough damage to the Buzz Wall. But Andre is going to be able to take this game one with the Poison Jab onto the Arachnid. So, very Get interesting that. to see. The Trick Room used against Andre, but he just managed to stall it out and use it in his favor. Because even though the Arachnid was putting on huge, uh, huge pressure on Andre's sides, he was able to pretty much neuter the Raichu and the Coco because they don't work in Trick Room at all. So, very interesting. Going to be interesting to see how Keen adapts to the Trick Room. He did bring his Arachnid as his answer, but it just wasn't enough because the Buzz Wall was too bulky on its physical defense. Whew. Into round two. Yeah, we uh, King did beat Andre in the Swiss round, so yeah. And Andre seems to be. Um, did, was it? A I don't know what, what the match was like. I probably was watching. We probably streamed it actually, and I don't know. Remember what the score was, <laughs> but Andre seems to be definitely uh, coming back on this. Well, he's, he's, took, he, took, he's, he's wise to keep Keen's tricks now because yeah. he, he ended up um, psychicking what was a Raichu, so he did. Yeah. He did call the double bolt switch and ended up psychicking a Coco, which put it in range of the All Out Pummeling, so that gave him a lot of momentum going into the future turns. So. <laughs> And we did, we did see that Keen had Electric Terrain for most of the match, so he could have made use of his Murkrow more because he had his Electric Terrain so much. So, may need to rely on that Quash a bit more in the future rather than just the Arachnid, because then the Quash will let his Coco and Raichu actually be able to do damage rather than just being knocked out mm. in the Trick Room. Andre's already locked in, so he's, he's pretty oh, he, sure about he's what he's doing. Yeah, so, not leading with the Speed Control. Um, going with the Arcanine instead ended up working out better for Andre, but he did leave himself open for the Psychic initially in the turn one, so maybe that could be an adjustment that King goes for, rather than trying to reset his electric terrain, use Andre's Psychic terrain against him with his Choice Specs Raichu. Mm. And maybe Andre doesn't want to lead with the uh, Arcanine this turn, because it didn't really have much going for it in the uh, first round. Well, it did, it, did, it did bait out the double bolt switch onto it, but it, it was bulky enough to survive that. It did sacrifice itself on turn one, but it did it gave Andre a lot of momentum because it put the Murkrow in um, any range of any attack, and it did, did redirect the attacks. Well, it didn't redirect, but it had the attacks go onto it, so it let the Lele have full HP and just keep spamming its life orb attacks. An interesting win, but I think this is probably the first time in the tournament we're going to see Keen not lead with both Raichu and Coco. We're going to see Garchomp yeah. come out with the Raichu. We're going to see the same lead from Andre's side with Tapu Lele and the Arcanine. So Which it, actually puts Arcanine in a much better position this time. Well, this time he gets to intimidate yeah. a physical attacker. But again, we sh I, I do want to see the Psychic move onto this Arcanine and make use of Andre's Psychic train against him. Because potentially, if with the Life Orb on the Lele, it may not have as much bulk as normal Lele. So even at minus one, a Tectonic Rage could do a lot of damage to the Lele. It does threat if it does survive, then it does threaten the knockout onto the Garchomp with the, the Life Orb Moonblast. But I would like to see a psychic move on to this Arcanine this turn. Okay. Yeah, Tapu Lele goes for the protect there, so um, not going to be taking any. Uh, the right, you goes for the false switch. So actually, not going to be using the uh, psychic to drain against it. Garchomp seems to be going for te te Tectonic Rage. I think that's probably going to be targeting the Arcanine. So yeah, very, very fortunate that he's going for the Tectonic Rage here rather than the Earthquake because. If he was going for the Volt Switch and then Earthquake, then the Volt Switch would yeah. have failed and the Earthquake would have gone into his own Raichu. Yeah. So he could have potentially been Volt Switching into his own oh, Raichu. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the Tectonic Rage into the Tapu Lele, so he didn't actually go for the Arcanine. If he would have Tectonic Rage the Arcanine, that would have been an, a one-shot, but... So, so he's really using didn't up like that Lele. Into, into the Tapu Lele, and the Flare Blitz is most likely going to knock out this Raichu, so he's not going to be able to u make use of his Choice Specs Raichu. He, he needed to go for the Psychic moves in the Psychic Terrain, so... Uh, I'm not Very quite sure what that play was, actually. I think he, he was probably predicting the Protect or the switch out from the Arcanine and just focused down the Lele, but mm. Andre calling the turn correctly and is gaining a lot of momentum. So we're going to get we're going to get the Electric Terrain now, but now the Raichu's gone, that Electric Terrain's not going to be as useful. It's, it's going to help the Coco, obviously, and reduce the Psychics from the, the Lele so that the Coco will be able to survive the Psychics, but the uh, Moonblast is still very threatening on the Garchomp mm. now that it can't go for another 600 Rage. Mm -hmm. Could potentially have Poison Jab, so a double target of um, Dazzling Gleam and Poison Jab could take out Alele, but then that leaves Arcanine just flare again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Arcanine goes for extreme speed, get a little bit of damage on that Coco before it wants to do anything. Tap uh, yeah, retaliates back with the Bolt Switch onto the uh, Tapu Lele there, does quite a bit of damage actually. 
Um, and then, yeah, it's going to switch out. We'll get to see what Jamie Keane's last is. So it's Keane's likely always... to be the Macro, and I do. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be the Macro, so I, I would have liked to see the Macro there because with the extreme speed on the Coco, that was breaking a potential slash, and that could potentially imply that the Psychic was coming into that slot. So he's going to end up earthquaking his own Arachnid, and the Slay survives on 1 HP. That is going to be very, very key because now he gets a Life Orb Dazzling Gleam onto the Garchomp, maybe not knocking it out. But it does do a yeah. lot of damage and it puts it in extreme speed range. So interesting choice running extreme speed on a Tapu Lele team because you wouldn't normally be able to make use of that. But yeah. because now Keen has set up the electric terrain, the Arcanine can extreme speed and just knock out the Garchomp. So instead of uh, the Raichu making use of the psychic terrain on Andrew's side, we're going to see Arcanine take use of the electric terrain of all things on yeah. Keen's side. So very interesting turn of events. That one, uh, one HP survival was very unfortunate for Keen. We don't know if that's a damage roll or not, but we did see a little bit of HP investment onto the Tapu Lele, so that was some nice EVing from Andrzej's part. And yeah, in comes uh, Nihilego on this side. It's um going to be able to threaten the Araquanid, and yeah, since Arcanine can take out the Garchomp yeah, with an Extreme Speed it's, it's leisure. Just, it's just a double knockout just, here, because yeah. the Extreme Speed goes onto the Garchomp, the Power Gem goes onto the Araquanid, and because the Sash on the Coco is broken, then yeah. there should just be a double knockout here, because the Power Gem will go onto the Araquanid, it will knock it out, and then in the future turn, he can just, yeah. uh, Andre can just go for Extreme Speed on the Garchomp and Sludge Bomb onto the Coco, and there is not much, I don't think, yeah, even so anything that yes. he can do. Yeah. So, this well, game is pretty to much to sealed to now. Andre adjusting very well from his Swiss rounds and being able to overcome uh, Keen's Raichu and Coco. So, because the Sash has been broken by the Extreme Speed, it's definitely in range of Sludge Bomb, and Garchomp is in range of Extreme Speed. So this game is wrapped up for Andre. Yeah, Coco comes in, and then, yeah, we're just going to see Extreme Speed, and then Sludge Bomb, and then that's that's pretty much it. So Andre actually, you know, losing to Keen in the Swiss, and then taking a very commanding victory in the uh, in the final. I think it was all decided on that turn one. The Tectonic Rage going into the Protect of the Lele, instead of knocking out the Arcanine was huge. Because if that Tectonic Rage would have targeted down the Arcanine, it would have picked up the KO and Andre Keen would have had uh, just a free knockout, basically. Andre managed to uh, managed to do a good call on both of his first matches. There were both two, um, be, uh, one big call in both games, so Andre yeah. playing very on well. On the first turn? Yeah, uh, yeah. on the first turns he psychicked into what was a Raichu expecting a double box, which, which worked out very nicely and put the Coco into uh, Z-move range. And then this turn he predicted the Tectonic Rage very nicely onto the Lele and just attacked with his Arcanine. So it's gonna, uh, King's going to protect with his Coco and he's going to get a double protect, I believe, with his Scarchomp, but it's not really going to help him much because he's still just going to be extreme speeded and yeah. such bombs and there's nothing that he can do. He's, gonna, he's even going to go for the Trick Room. So, just into basically calling that. Yeah, so now, now it is absolutely over because the Arcanine and the Night Ligo both underspeed the Garchomp. Presumably the Night Ligo. If you're running yeah. Trick Room, it's most likely going to be modest rather than timid, so... Yeah. Um, e even regardless, the Arcanine can pick up the KO on the Garchomp, even without the Extreme Speed now. It can choose to go for the Flare Blitz if it wants, and the uh, Night Ligo will now underspeed the Coco and get the Sludge Bomb. So there, there, there wasn't anything King can do, and now there is even less mm -hmm. that King can do. So even less than nothing. Yeah, basically checkmate at this point. Yes, absolutely. And uh, Probably I've... need a... a I, I guess it's going to be a septuple protect on his Garchomp. <laughs> and then, a septuple protect. And, and then he, he just constantly at, um, attacks into the Garchomp instead. Since, um, Thunderbolt Paralysis. No, like a, a, he went, he's a quintuple protect and a septuple protect. <laughs> and then he Thunderbolt Paralyzes the Night Elite. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> what the wing here. condition? <laughs> there, there wasn't really a wing condition. Like, I guess that was technically a wing condition, but yeah. King's going to accept the defeats and Andre is going to be able to take this game to a percent chance. Impossible odds, but Keen wouldn't, wasn't going to go for them. Andre is going to be able to take this final 2-0 against Keen and overcome the undefeated Jamie Keen in this MSS. So.